Hello, and welcome to this presentation, Transmission Measurements with the Rodian Short CNL. In this short presentation, we'll walk you through examples of how to make two-port or transmission measurements using a Rodian Schwartz ZNL series vector network analyzer. This presentation assumes a basic understanding of S-parameter measurements. If you're not already familiar with S-parameters, or if you'd like a brief refresher, you might want to watch the presentation Understanding S-parameters before continuing with this presentation. The typical test setup for two port measurements is very simple. We just connect the two ports on our ZNL to the two ports on our device under test, or DUT. Normally, we would want to calibrate our VNA before making measurements, with the DUT ports being the reference or calibration plane. But in this presentation, we'll assume that we already have a valid calibration. If you'd like step-by-step -step instructions on performing a calibration, please see the presentation, VNA Calibration Basics with a Rodian Schwartz CNL. To select the measurement type on the ZNL, press the Measure Hard key and then choose either S21 or S12 under S parameters. Remember that in an S21 measurement, the ZNL transmits power on port 1 and measures the power received on port 2, whereas an S12 measurement does the same thing but in the opposite direction, that is, from port 2 to port 1. After selecting S21 or S12, the results are automatically displayed on the ZNL screen. If the displayed frequency range or span needs to be adjusted, use the frequency and span hard keys and associated soft keys to adjust the center and span such that the trace is easier to read and work with. For example, we've moved the center frequency to 782 MHz and adjusted the span to 200 MHz in order to better see the shape of our device under test. Here, a bandpass filter. The default measurement format shows the results as dB magnitude and as a function of frequency. In other words, the display shows the level of received power relative to the level of transmitted power. The 0 dB line near the top of the trace shows the input power level. Within the filter passband, the level of received power is almost the same as the level of transmitted power. But outside of this range, the received power is much lower than the transmitted power. In other words, the filter is blocking or attenuating signals at frequencies outside of the passband. We can get more accurate numbers regarding the filter's center frequency, bandwidth, and attenuation, both inside and outside of the passband, by using markers. Markers are accessed using the marker hard key. For example, if we place a regular marker in the middle of our passband and so-called delta marker at some point along the filter's skirt, we can see that at the center of the passband, 782 MHz, we have only about 2 dB of loss, but this increases to over 80 dB of loss, or rejection, once we're 30 MHz away from the center. A more convenient way of measuring filter parameters is using the ZNL's built-in band filter function, which is accessed using the marker function hard key and the band filter button. After selecting the band filter measurement type and the filter bandwidth we want to use, the filter parameters are calculated and displayed automatically, including things such as bandwidth, center, quality factor, and loss. We can use the same procedure but select band stop to get a similar set of filter parameters for a band stop filter. Recall that a band stop filter is designed to pass all frequencies except those within a certain range. In some cases, we can also use a two-port VNA to measure a device that has more than two ports. An example of this is a three-port directional coupler, which has an input port, an output port, and a sample port. In addition to passing power from the input to the output, some of the power is also routed to the sample port. We can verify and measure the function of this coupler in two steps. First, we stimulate the input port and measure at the sample port. This gives us the coupling factor. We then make another measurement, this time stimulating the output port and then measuring at the sample port. This is called the isolation. Directivity is then calculated by the difference between the coupling coefficient and the isolation value. Note that in both steps we've terminated the unused port. This is good practice whenever using a VNA. Let's end with a brief summary. Transmission measurements are measurements made between two ports on a network analyzer, that is, S21 or S12 measurements. Filters and couplers are examples of common passive devices that can be measured or characterized using transmission measurements. For filters, 
We usually want to measure the width of the pass band, or stop band, as well as the loss inside and outside of these bands. For couplers, we often look at the directivity, or isolation of the coupler, as well as how much signal appears at the sample port. And lastly, we can use markers and automatic measurement functions to improve both the accuracy and the speed of our measurements. This concludes our presentation, Transmission Measurements with the Rodian Schwartz CNL. If you'd like to learn more about network analyzers and network analyzer measurements, please see the links in the video description. Thanks for watching.